Welcome to Big Ten Men's Soccer in 10, which is a quick look at the season ahead and reflection on great moments and program history of all nine Big Ten Men's Soccer teams. That means a visit with all nine head coaches and one special guest from each university. I'm Dean Linke, joined by the man we call the professor at BTN, Chris Monroe, former goalkeeper at Indiana. Hello, professor. Great to be here, Dean. And today we focus on the mighty Michigan Wolverines, led by their top man, Shaka Daly, and one of my all-time favorite players, the baby-faced assassin, Robbie Mertz, now crushing it with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the USL. Welcome, Shaka, and welcome, baby-faced assassin, Robbie Mertz. Dean, Chris, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, guys. Appreciate it. What kind of team will Michigan have this year? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll continue to be competitive. I think we have a good group of uh, seniors returning, uh, led by certainly Mark Ibarra, Jackson Reagan, uh, Umar uh, Farouk Guzman, uh, Mohamed Zaki. Uh, we had Carlos Tejas put in some uh, fantastic minutes for us last year. So I think that group is poised to lead in the right way and, and have great experience. So actually watching that game back, as, as Bobby did, I, I didn't realize how many of them played uh, in 2017 in that game. So they're, they're hungry for more, and, and I know they're not complacent. And I think we have a, a nice group of young players to complement the rest of the group. Some guys in the group who didn't play last year uh, as red shirts, uh, like an Evan Rasmussen from Chicago. Um, and then we have Derek Broch, uh, who scored seven goals for us. And we have Inyaki Rodriguez, who is a red shirt from last year, too. So I think there's a couple guys still in the group. And then our incoming class is, is exciting. You mentioned your returning players, including obviously Marky Barra. Can you shed some insight as to how valuable he's been for you both on the field and through his leadership qualities off the field? Yeah, certainly. Uh, he's, he's more of an on-the-field guy, pretty quiet and subdued off the field. But, but on the field, he's, uh, he's grown in leaps and bounds. I think he's followed suit to Robbie. Our, our big concern when Robbie and Eva left were – who was going to carry the mantle of kind of leadership and direction in the midfield, you know? So it took him some time, certainly last year where we had, we went ebbs and flows and really more in ebbs and flows as we were trying to figure out who was going to play where, you know, centrally with Mark, because it was pretty straightforward with Robbie, Evo and Mark for a few years there. Uh, but I think once we kind of got our rhythm uh, in there and as we're growing our group now with the likes of Kevin Buka. Uh, Inyaki Rodriguez. Uh, we have Cameron Martin, who's a transfer from San Francisco. Uh, we have um, Mohamed Zaki, who will probably play underneath the center forwards a little bit more this year. Uh, and then we also have uh, um, a young man coming in that we think will uh, will be exciting as well. So Bryce with Bryce Blevins from Chicago. So we have quite a few guys there that will make it competitive. All right, it's great to have the babyface assassin, Robbie Mertz, here. The babyface lives on, although I got to tell you, Robbie, I've been watching you, and you're looking like a man out there. You're crushing it. You're doing great at Pittsburgh. Talk about how Shaka and Michigan helped you prepare for the next level. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Uh, it was just an amazing four years that I spent in Michigan, and I think it was a process that started day one. It wasn't just something that came on in the last couple of years when I was getting all those minutes, you know, um, Shaka and Tommy and the whole coaching staff there were just amazing. Um, and I think it, it goes well beyond what, what happened on the field. Um, I obviously got a great soccer education, but um, at Michigan, we talk about becoming Michigan men. And um, I think just as a person, as a human being, I grew a lot during my time there under Shaka and um, can't say enough about that. So uh, to have the success that we did, but also to have the failures um, along the way, you learn a lot doing that. So um, just... It was, it was really a, just a well-rounded growth experience. Well, you mentioned the on-the-field education, but obviously being a student athlete, there is that other component, and Michigan's uh, academic standards are known for being notable in and of themselves. You got your degree uh, from the prestigious Ross School of Business. Could you shed some light on, too, just how difficult at times it was juggling those on-the-field and off-the-field responsibilities? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, the business school there is is prestigious and it's difficult and there's a lot of um, group work. So it's it's working with other students who don't have the same time commitments that you do as a student athlete. So um, there's definitely that balance there. But I think in a lot of ways, I found that uh, it was helpful to have both sides of it because um, when I needed a break from school, I had the opportunity to go out there and play soccer and, and to have fun with my teammates. And um, likewise, it was nice to be able to to settle down and to kind of throw yourself into something 
other than soccer when that wasn't um, maybe going as well as you'd hope. So I, I kind of found that was the silver lining in it all, but um, certainly a lot of hours and um, some sleepless nights for sure along the way. Of course, and looking back to your on the field career, if you had to pick one, what stands out as far as your most memorable on the field moment in Ann Arbor? Uh, well, it wasn't in Ann Arbor, but I would have to say in College Park when we when we won the Big Ten in 2017, I got the hat on right now. Um, so that was just an amazing, amazing night. Um, one that I will relive many times over the coming years um, to, to get that done after everything we'd been in through it's just unbelievable and you could see right on the field after it happened what it meant to us it was just really amazing and uh, for Francis to get the goal was incredible as well because he had been the face of the program for a couple years there so um, I would say that one's going to take a cake for for the rest of time. <laughs> Ironically you know going into that game you know four teams or three teams could have won the title and we found out in the middle or late in the second half the first person I told I brought Robbie off uh to give him a break. Bobby was the first one I told, and I said, now we got to tell the group, let's go for it. And then he went back on, and he knew, okay, we're going to go for it. So it injected a little bit more life into the group, you know? Yeah. Well, great timing on that story, because they just re-aired that incredible matchup that was epic, and the celebration, the raw emotion from Shaka as well. Shaka, when I first saw Robbie play, you saw that little baby face, and it just came out, baby face assassin. But in many ways, he was the face of your team for a couple years. What, when you look at his growth, how does that make you feel? No, tremendous. I mean, Robbie went from a preferred walk-on to a young man who played as a freshman to when we played at Notre Dame, I knew we had something there. Uh, and I think he remembers the night we played at Notre Dame when we started him or played him centrally. Mm -hmm. Then he grew his sophomore year and then junior year, given responsibility as a captain, as a leader, uh, took that very much to heart and, and took great pride in that. And then growing into uh, a mainstay, uh, a captain, minutes played, uh, Ross business graduate, and then Big Ten Medal of Honor recipient as well. So let's not forget that at Michigan, which is an unbelievable honor and the first in men's soccer. So, you know, uh, fantastic career and fantastic growth, without question. Robbie, uh, just real quick, what are your expectations for the Wolverines this year, being so close to the program, only having graduated a couple years ago, seeing how they've continued to progress since your departure from the university? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still, I remain close with a lot of the kids who are going to be juniors and seniors this year, um, particularly that senior class. I think that's what's going to be the key for them is uh, coming through in their final year and, and really making the most of every moment. Um, Cause I can tell you, it goes by really quickly. I can't believe it's been two years since I wore that Jersey, but uh, I think that's going to be the key for them is relying on those seniors. And um, there's a lot of talent in that group and going back to 2017, that's when they really came through uh, as freshmen for us. And I think they'll do it again this year. Robbie, we didn't know you could actually grow facial hair, but what does mama and papa merch think about the baby face assassin moniker? Uh, they love it. I, I, it's, uh, it's a work in progress still, but, uh, yeah, they're, they, they still embrace it to this day. So I think my mom will always, she'll always love it and hope that it, it remains because, uh, she wants me to, uh, get rid of this, I think here. So <laughs> final comment shock on a serious note, we're pushing forward black lives matter. You have been outspoken on that quick comment as we wrap up. Yeah, no, it's uh, certainly a, a challenging time for America uh, in, in many ways the world. It's a global, you know, uh, as we're going through a global pandemic, we're going through some global enlightenment in, in what's going on. And I think, uh, ironically, Robbie and I have had some great, meaningful conversation with uh, what he felt about it um, and, and how it relates in his personal situation. So it's, it's something that not only are we uh, educating our, our group internally, but we're still uh, having many extensions to uh, our alum and, and those great ambassadors like Robbie Mertz. Well, I, I speak for Robbie and Chris when I say we stand with you, Shaka, and we'll continue the dialogue. Shaka Daly, the babyface assassin, Robbie Mertz, that'll never get old. Professor, thanks so much for being with us. Big Ten, men's soccer in 10.